This time, I'm taking on Hollywood stunt woman and expert survivalist Kai Fano. <laughs> Kai has played stunt double for some of the world's biggest stars and is now taking me on in the sub-zero high-altitude mountains of Sichuan, China. Kai, hello. How nice you doing? to meet you. Yeah, lovely to meet you as well. And you also, I hear you've been 12 years in Hollywood as a stunt woman? <laughs> yeah, 16, but yeah, who's 16 counting? 16 years, really? <laughs> wow. I feel like I have a lot to prove being the only female on this challenge. It would be so amazing for me to be the first woman out. You start at 4,600 metres in deep snow. Down in the valleys, there are alpine forests which offer some refuge from the frigid and near lifeless snowy mountain. You'll head out of the valley and travel 45 kilometers, climbing into the freezing, oxygen-starved altitudes towards the exfil point on the 5,000 meter high Mount Balang. What's our rescue time if something happens? Could be 24 hours, okay? So it's self-sufficiency, any slight mistake, bit of frostbite, that's game over for you. Bushcraft here is paramount. On this challenge, I'm gonna give you a rope and I'm gonna give you a knife. Okay, stand by and go! So disorientated. Guys, change direction. She's heading up and over the mountains. That's the last thing I want to do. I'm heading down to the tree line where I can find wood. This is hard. This is properly hard. I gave it naked. Is there any more oxygen in the air? And I'm going to head over to these rocky outcrops. I'm going to be able to move much faster. This is the perfect area to consolidate. I can get a fire going. I can make a rudimentary shelter. Importantly, I can make myself warm for the night. This bit of wood here, I'm just going to use as a half board, so that's the bit that the drill drills into. So this is pyrite. I can get a spark by striking two pieces of pyrite together. If this works, this is gonna be one of the easiest methods of fire making I can find out here. Fire. Yes! So, it's a dead bird. Yeah, it's been dead quite a while. But, even though I'm not going to eat it, I can use it as bait. I'm going to make a trap. If that was a small mammal, that's definitely going to get killed. That's a surprising amount of weight in that slug. I'm skewering the, the meat of the dead bird, which stinks, onto the uh, trigger stick so that it definitely won't come away. So if an animal pulls it, it will pull the stick with it. And as you can see, it's quite sensitive. <laughs> this is definitely the part I get most nervous about, is making a fire. This charger should be fine enough that it can catch that spark. I have to get this fire going. Yes! I'm getting good sparks. <sighs> yes! If this had failed, it would have been a brutal night. <laughs> we have a rat. We have a rat. <laughs> rat for breakfast. <laughs> Ready for uh, barbecuing. It's absolutely essential that you eat the organ meats, but um, unless you eat the organ meats, you start feeling really, really bad. You, you've not got the complete nutrition that you need unless you're eating almost all of the animal. Might sound a bit disgusting eating rat for breakfast, but this is just valuable protein. 
and it tastes wonderful. Breakfast of champions. Any of this stuff is so slick and one foot wrong. I'm down this entire mountain. Oh man, just found this giant bone. Just come to this massively steep cliff. Anything else is gonna waste my entire day. I'm gonna try a um, body abseil. Now, the only way to abseil without a harness is to wrap the rope around my own body, creating friction points. This marrow inside, I'll be able to gouge that out. Like, look how greasy that is. Even if it's just my dry lips. I mean, no one's gonna wanna kiss me after seeing this show and <laughs> knowing I've rubbed bone marrow <laughs> on my lips for moisturizer. <laughs> this is where I'm gonna use the bone break. Can thread the rope through it. It moves smoothly through it like that, but I put one bend in it and it acts as a brake system. I think the bone break just saved me there. The risks I'm taking on this race, I hope they're paying off. Above here, there aren't going to be any trees, so I'm going to collect as much wood as I can carry so that I can make a fire if I am caught up in the snow line tonight. OK, this is the, the inner workings of the uh, rope that I cut off. I can use that to bundle up the firewood. It does seem like a huge amount of um, kit, but if I don't look after myself up there, I'm not going to last very long. There's something moving over there. Like a pheasant? Because so I'm going to have to make some kind of weapon, some kind of throwing stick. With the Australian indigenous boomerang into a flock of birds or knocking out a kangaroo. I've made it slightly rounded on top and flat on the bottom, so hopefully it'll fly through the air. There's two birds there. Ah! Oh, I didn't know. I'm going to try and take the feathers off the bird in a single sheet and that way I might be able to use it for insulation. Look at that. <laughs> and that is some great insulation. I got myself a pheasant kebab right here. The thing about wild meat is it can get parasites in it. So I'm going to cook this meat to within an inch of its life just to make sure I've killed all of the potential parasites in it. Mmm, tastes like this mix between crispy skin duck and chicken. I definitely feel like I'm back in the race with this. I'm going to make myself a set of snowshoes and uh, they need to be long enough. They're going to look almost like skis, like cross-country skis. And then the top here, it's going to be tied and then bent up at the front. So I'm actually going to use the... Da -da -da. I'm so happy with that. Right, make one more and it's back into the snow we go. I was thinking about making a face covering out of this. That's going to prevent my nose from getting frostbitten when we start to get up into these higher altitudes. I'm wearing a dead pheasant mask in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Every single step is taking energy. <sighs> This is almost the highest I've been in altitude. I'm feeling like I really don't have much left in the tank.
Ed and Kai are a few kilometers apart, but both are heading towards the finish on Mount Balang. They still have this one last 4,000 meter hurdle to climb, and it's going to take everything out of them. I'm about 20 meters from what I'm assuming is my highest point. I'm going to need to make a kinsey, which is the type of snow cave that literally requires me to use the snow from this big mound and pile it up in a massive pile. Ah. I, need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. I just started getting really panicky. The more is blocking my own entrance and I just started getting so claustrophobic. I want to build it bigger so that for a start I'm not feeling claustrophobic in there. I've got a small cabin. All things considered, I'm in a good position. Oh my goodness, Stafford. The predicaments that you find yourself in. <sighs> I'm gonna give it all tomorrow. I can hardly breathe. My lungs are on fire. <sighs> hey, there's one last hurdle for them. They're going to look up and they're going to see this mound. It's covered in snow. There's about a foot of powder on it. That means they can't really see where they go. That means that their leg will go through its tracks. It's a deep snow and it's shards of rock. This is not the time to be stopping. Now it's just my race. <sighs> Amazing feat. <sighs> it's hard to predict the route up there. Every step, you'd sink up to your waist in those rock wells. I'll tell you what, you're a winner. However, you're not the first, but you did extremely well. Where is Ed? <laughs> you're alive. <laughs> well done, Tony. Well done. Holy cow. When you've given something everything you have, <sighs> um, <sighs> you can't be disappointed. It's not about the competition with someone else. It's always just knowing that I couldn't have given any more to a situation. That's the highlight to me.